Hello, my little mathematicians. Today, we're going to practice adding fractions, but by doing um, what's called shading area boxes. So we can kind of visualize what's happening when we're adding fractions. Okay, so first off, um, let's go ahead and pretend that the first ones we're adding are one third and one fifth. Okay, so let's start with this one third. If you were to have a rectangle, okay, go ahead and draw a rectangle in this box. Cut it up into three pieces, okay? How would you cut it? Okay, so I'm gonna cut it like this. Okay, so now I have one, two, three pieces. Some of you guys, maybe you cut it this way. One, two, and then there would be your third piece. So if you cut it twice going this way, Okay, that's fine. As long as you have three pieces, I'm going to go ahead and label it that this is one third, that would be two thirds, and this would be three thirds. Each of these is one third of this total piece, right? Okay. Now here's the tricky part. I want you to still be able to visualize that there's only three pieces, but I also want you to somehow cut the same rectangle into five pieces. How would you do that? Go ahead and see if you can try to do that. Okay, what I did is I cut it five going this way. So one, two, three, and then four, five. Okay, so see how I have one, two, three, four, five rows. So if I imagine that those dark blue lines weren't there, I'd have one, two, three, four, five equal pieces. Yeah, Miss Love's drawing's not that perfect. Imagine that it is. <laughs> okay, so there's five equal pieces going this way if I count the rows, and then there's three equal pieces if I look at the dark blue lines going down. Um, okay, so for later, I know this doesn't make that much sense now, but I would get in the habit of kind of labeling that each of these, like that's one fifth, that's another fifth, this is one fifth, this is one fifth, and then that last row, that's one fifth. Okay, so what do you notice then? What's the length and width or the dimensions of this rectangle? Okay, well, the length is one, two, three by what's the width? It's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's say we had another rectangle. And this time I want you to cut it into four equal pieces. Can you cut this rectangle into four pieces? Go ahead and try that. Okay, I cut it. I like to cut um, my columns first. So I cut it in half and then I cut each of those in half. Now I have one, two, three, four equal pieces. Maybe some of you guys did four equal rows. Okay, so there's a fourth, there's a fourth, there's a fourth, there's a fourth. So one, two, three, four equal pieces. How would you cut it so that you still can see those four pieces, but you also can see three pieces? Okay, so I just cut it this way, one, two, three, right? One, two, three equal pieces. If I were to ignore those dark blue lines just going this way, there's one, two, three rows. So then if I were to look overall at this rectangle, it has a length of one, two, three, four by a width of one, two, three. Okay, what about this last one? Let's go ahead and cut that rectangle into two equal pieces. What would you do? Okay, I just cut it in half right there. There's one piece, there's your second piece. Okay, so you have a half and then another half. You know, that same rectangle, how would you cut it into three pieces without getting rid of those halves? Because I wouldn't want to just draw another line here, then they're not equal, right? OK, 
Okay, so if I draw it this way instead, now you have one, two, three equal pieces going that way. Okay, and what do you notice about the dimensions of this rectangle? It's a one, two, by one, two, three. Okay, so any patterns that you see between the denominators and then the dimensions of the rectangle, okay, what do they have in common? Yeah, that these denominators always match the dimensions, the length and width of your rectangle. Anything else that you notice um, specifically about how these are all related to each other? Like maybe the total number of boxes, what do you see? What is the total number of boxes for this one? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. What do you notice about six in the denominators? If you were to go two times three or length times width, that's the total number of boxes. Interesting. Okay, three by four. How many total boxes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What do you predict this total number of boxes would be then? Yeah, 15, three by five, length times width, it would give you 15 total area boxes inside. Interesting, huh? Okay, so now um, let's expand on this a little bit, okay? And if we turn the page, um, I want you guys to try to draw one of these, okay? So pick which one you wanna do and just try to draw one, either four, five, or six. So draw a rectangle and then cut it into five equal pieces and then additionally cut it into two equal pieces. Okay, or if you wanna do the one fourth and one sixth or one seventh and one half, go ahead and try it. Okay, whichever one you try, if you get it right once we check it in a second, then you don't need to do any more. Okay, so right here, um, I cut it into fifths going this way and then halves going this way. But instead of you did it half here and half here and then five different rows, that's fine as long as you still have a total of 10 boxes. They're all the same size. Okay, here, you should have a total of 24 boxes if you did this one, all the same size. I did four columns and then six rows, but you could have switched it to six columns and four rows. Okay, or if you tried this one, I had seven columns and two rows for a total of 14 equal size boxes, but maybe you did um, two columns and seven rows, but you still have 14 identical boxes. Okay. Now I want you to try this. This <laughs> looks a lot simpler than it actually is. Okay. You're going to shade each box below to represent the fraction written next to it. So when we say that you're going to shade the top number um, as if it were broken apart into this many equal pieces. So if I go this way, that's one, two, right? Cause like this is one row, this is a second row. There's not a third row. So I can't shade like this whole row because I want one out of three and there's not three rows, but there is three columns. So if I treated it as if it was three columns, then I could shade one of those columns. And this is representing one out of three columns. Okay. So then what would this look like? Well, again, one, two, three columns. So let's shade one, two of them would look like that. That's two thirds. Okay. Now for here, would I shade one of the columns? No, cause this is one third and I want one half. So instead this is one two equal pieces. So if I wanted to shade one of those two equal pieces, I'd have to shade the row. And there's this tricky one. What does that mean? You're shading one whole thing. So one whole thing. <laughs> one means you're shading the entire thing. Okay. Um, one fourth. So if I go this way, one, two, three equal pieces, or this way, one, two, three, four four equal pieces, and I want to shade one of them. Okay, you try the last three. Okay, hit pause, try them, unpause, and come back. All right, so you unpaused it. You're back with us. Hopefully you didn't shade the rows because there's not four equal rows. 
but there is one, two, three, four equal columns, and you want to shade one, two, three of those four columns. So that's three fourths. Okay, here there's one, two, three rows, and you're going to shade two of those rows. And then finally, one, two, three, four. Mm -mm. One, two, three. Yes. So you're focusing on the rows because that's how many pieces you want. Three equal pieces, and you want one of those three rows shaded. There you go. Okay, that doesn't seem like that big a deal, but being able to master that is going to be very important for what's coming up next.